Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 10, and I'm going to talk about the directional derivative. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos to this are as follows. In number 9, I discussed why the gradient of a function is perpendicular to the function. And at number 8, I discussed the normal vector. Now, if I'm honest, the, these two videos are the same. This is the detailed one. This is the detailed video and this is the summary and the reason I actually have two videos is because I want people to be able to search for this particular phrase they might not necessarily make the jump between this and uh, why the gradient is perpendicular to your function so to be honest I'm going to build exact on all the things I did in number eight and just follow that and we'll talk about the directional derivative so the directional derivative is given as follows we'll say that we use this the way we use to, we use it to, to, to notate it, I suppose. So d is our direction, um, no, direction derivative. Notice the way it's a vector, and we talk about it in, in the direction of some other vector. So we'll say u. So we're talking about the direction directional derivative in the direction of some other vector. This other vector, of course, could be a unit vector, and if that's the case, we would give it a hat. But for the moment, I'm going to say that it isn't. And what it means is it's the the, it, it is the, the rate of change of your function in the direction in the direction of u or we'll say if you're talking about unit vectors u hat okay so what we're saying is this I might say well how you know how close is is, is my, the rate of change of my function? With my uh, with this a a random particular vector, what you do is you take the directional derivative of your function, let's say f, and you'd say in the direction of a particular um, vector u or a particular particularly in a vector u hat. Now, if we if we went back to my video on the normal vector, what we found is as follows: we found that let's say we have a random curve, and we want to define the tangent at x zero y zero at a particular point x zero y zero. So in order to do that, we had to get del f del x and del f del y evaluated at x0, y0, and that gave us the equation of our, our, of our tangent. I'm going to call it tangent. That's our tangent vector, I would say. Next, I defined the normal vector as the one that's perpendicular to the tangent, okay, because that's the only way it can be. This is my normal vector, okay, because the tangent only touches the surface at one point. Of course, you can, you can have minus n here as well and you, you just choo choose your convention which is positive which is negative uh, by the way I've drawn those as unit vectors which they don't necessarily have to be just to remind us that n hat is equal to n the, the vector n divided by the magnitude of the vector n and that's very important because it gives us gives us the direction um, rather than the magnitude it's very good so how did we work out the general formula for the for the uh, um, for the normal vector. Well, we noted that the, the dot product of two vectors, a and b, is equal to a, b cos theta. And we know that theta is maximized when they're parallel, okay, when they're parallel, and it's minimized when a and b are perpendicular because the cos of 90 is zero. So because we know that the normal is supposed to be perpendicular to the tangent, what we found is that the gradient of f, which is the normal vector, is uh, dot the tangent vector was equal to zero or what we actually had was n dot the tangent vector is equal to zero. But we found that in actual fact, the f the we had in, our, in, in the formula for n, the actual formula for n turned out to be the gradient. So what we found was the gradient of our function is actually the normal, the normal vector, or the gradient is perpendicular to your function, and it's, it's, uh, it's perpendicular to your tangent line. Okay, so it's, it's, the, it's perpendicular to function in one direction, and it's also perpendicular to your tangent in another direction. So really what we're doing here is, is doing an analogy. We want to see how close our function, let's say f, is in direction to, uh, let's say, u. So do the exact same thing. We, take the, we want to take the, um, the dot product. So we take the gradient of f again, and we dot it with u. Okay? Now, of course, if it's going to be 0, well, then they're perpendicular, and, well, that's all well and good. But you're, this isn't, it's not necessarily the tangent vector we're talking about here. So if, if it was equal to zero, well then you would be a tangent vector. But if it's non-zero, then you can be any vector. And we call this the directional derivative. So what I would say, this is the directional derivative of x and in the direction of u. 
and you would have to evaluate it at a particular point, let's call it x0, y0. Alright, that's the directional derivative. So how do we compute this? Well, it's to be honest, let's, it's, it's simply a dot product. So let us, su let us suggest that u is the vector ai hat plus b in the j hat direction, like that. Okay, and then we, we have a function which is a function of x and y. So I'm going to take the gradient of our function and it's going to be del f del x times a plus del f del y times b. That's going to be the gradient. Oh, that's going to be the gradient of f, the gradient of f dot u. Okay, and this is going to be our directional derivative. This is the directional derivative in the direction of the, unit, uh, the vector u, but uh, of our function f, but we still haven't worked out, we still haven't evaluated it at a particular point. So if I plugged in, we'll say, uh, you know, x is equal to x0, and I plugged in x is equal to, sorry, y is equal to y0, then we have the directional derivative at x0, y0, of our function f in the direction of u. And often, like I said, we like to, we, we like to work with unit vectors so like, just for maybe the third time to repeat it, this time we would have the direction derivative of our function f evaluated at x0, y0 in the direction of u hat, the unit vector u, u hat. So let's do an example. Let's compute an example, a very basic one. Let's suggest that our function f, a function of x and y, is equal to x squared minus 3 times xy. It's also minus, or excuse me, plus 2x minus 5y. And I'm going to give my function u is equal to vi hat and it's going to be plus wj hat. And I want to evaluate it, evaluate it at a is equal to 0, 0. So we need to get the gradient of f and if we take the gradient of f we're going to get the gradient of f which is a vector still of course is going to be twice x minus 3y plus 2 in the i hat direction and we're going to have minus 3x plus minus 3x minus 5 in the j hat direction. All right, so we take the dot product, take the, excuse me, take the gradient of it, uh, evaluate it at 0, 0, and it's simply 2i hat minus 5j hat. All right, we dot product it then with um, the gradient of f at 0, 0, the gradient of f at 0, 0, and we dot, dot it with u, so that's going to be equal to, um, it's going to be equal to 2 times, two times v, minus 5 times w, and that's the directional derivative, um, that's going to be equal to the directional derivative of our function evaluated at 0, 0 in the dr direction of the vector u. Okay, now I'm sure you can hear the talking in the background, so that's why I was trying to hurry that up. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysictutorials.com. Thank you.